all types and sizes. To see samples of their work or to find out more, visit their website at amp2.tv. That's A-M-P, the number 2.tv. Or call them at 866-224-5422. Feel free to call for a quote or just a consult of how to put your business on a social media platform or radio platform, or just doing a show that is covered by all platforms. Call 866-224-5422 and make an appointment. That's 866-224-5422. The opinions of the audience of The Hemp Boca Show are not the opinions of Gene, Chris, and any associate of The Hemp Boca Show. Hemp Boca products are not intended to treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects may occur and not recommended for use by women who are nursing or planning pregnancy. Ask a healthcare professional before use. Keep out of reach from children. You must be 18 years or older to purchase products from Hemp Boca. No boundaries. <laughs> oh, you I caught on. on. You caught on. I am I so thirsty. Here. That's great. Oh, thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. We appreciate you it. Water for you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Look yeah. who's here. He finally made it. Mr. Ed Sparrow. Oh, yeah. I made it finally. <laughs> <laughs> Our HIV activist. Thank you for being here, Ed. Yes. And look what he brought us. It wow. is carrot cake. What is that again? It's carrot cake. Carrot cake with... <laughs> Bailey's, Bailey's cream cheese. Cream cheese. Bailey's cream it, uh, cheese. With some cookies on top. But you told it is us. Delicious. You told us Last it is your <laughs> famous <laughs> Bailey's. Yeah. Yeah, because you know when you cook, you use milk. Yeah. Well, I don't always use milk. I use Bailey's Irish cream. Oh. Yeah. So yeah. it just makes it a little bit more. Yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> He's a fantastic. Most of the time when Ed and I meet, it happens to be over food. Yeah, that's, nice. true. that's true. That yeah. goes along um, with your uh, yeah, with your recipe fine. book. Leave me alone right now. He's a chocolate <laughs> yeah. thing. But he, but he is a great chef. And show. we're here with Miss Susan Lee Mintz. Yes. She's previously known as Mrs. Boner previously. from Boca. In another life. <laughs> the naughty, sexy cookbook lady is an author, empowerment speaker, HIV activist, and a hospice advocate proponent for legalizing marijuana and an avid user of CBD Hemp Boca oil, people. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's good to see you. And you. Thanks for coming again. You like yes. the hair? Love it. Love the hair. Do you know who she, she is tonight? Who she? Trixie. 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 Do you Trixie. have a name with for a all, Do you have a name for <laughs> all, the all of them? All <laughs> of them. Oh, of course. Nice. Trixie of course was the pixie. Nice. It's very nice. Yeah, right, we well, uh, this we is heard the Rick Project and we do. Sponsor. Sponsor. Every After the, the opening project. of every show yeah. it's a Ricker project. <clears throat> um, it's a Ricker project band. Uh, the album uh, "Jazz for the Beer Drinkers" mm-hmm. and the song Grand is Groove. Grand's Groove. Love that right? song. I, I will never get sick of it. No. Um, also, our main sponsor. Yes, uh, Phoenix Back of Logistics is the exclusive distributor of Hemp Boca Clinical CBD products. They are an e-commerce fulfillment and shipping specialist providing a wide range of logistics services and retail and consumer goods manufacturers, including online resellers. They also provide FBA fulfillment by Amazon services. For more information, please contact Barry Stein, 954-742-4790, or visit them online at figurespackage.com. So always, you, always Barry, a shout-out to uh, Norm and, and Norm. Barry and Hunter. We Deborah. appreciate it. <laughs> the I whole gang. The whole gang over there. <laughs> but, um, Tasia. So we have a really special uh, show today because now we have not only, well, Susan is also a big supporter of the HIV AIDS and activists. We have Mr. Ed Sparron mm-hmm. here. Welcome, welcome. He's going to yeah. shed some light on what's going on in that neck of the woods. Absolutely. And, and we're going we're gonna to touch on kind of HIV AIDS and CBD or cannabis. Uh, yeah, I want to sure. yeah. learn some things by you and, and I want to get an idea on, on your experiences and, and what you can tell us about if any of that is occurring you know, uh, over at, uh, you know, in the area where you are and, and whatever you know and within the industry. Yeah, because so. we kind of want to recap from last week because we didn't get a, the pleasure of having you on mm-hmm. the show. Yeah. So we mm-hmm. kind of just um, went on kind of doing a little history and um, mm-hmm. of what's going on and what uh, the stigma, we were talking about a lot about stigma of yeah, HIV. Yeah, the stigma. Um, right. All over of just 
and the and, the, and the, transmission, mm -hmm. the, the transmission routes, how it sure. hasn't changed. And yeah. yeah. Well, I guess we can tie up a lot of this with Hemboka, food, and <laughs> HIV <laughs> in one right. simple paragraph. And I'll begin with, uh, let's just start with this story, Brownie Mary. Uh, mm -hmm. Did I tell you guys about yes, Brownie Mary? you did. So we had the 80s, and the virus started, and the situation started. In 1990, I moved to San Francisco, and I was there for three years. And I found such great activism and just getting involved and making things happen. Mm -hmm. And while I was there, I met this elderly lady named Brownie Mary, and she just didn't fit in, you know? She was this older lady, kind of dowdy and quiet, and there's all these other crazy people being very activist. And so I, I met Brownie Mary in a bar um, in San Francisco in 1991-92. And what she was doing was this. Um, for people who had AIDS or HIV, they were giving uh, uh, marijuana-laced brownies. So having that with HIV and AIDS and the, the medications that they were taking uh, created uh, f wasting of the body and not able to keep food down. So one way to treat this side effect of the HIV medications was giving uh, marijuana products to get their appetite back up so they didn't waste away. Mm -hmm. So this lady, Brownie Mary, was a nurse, and so now that she's kind of retired and no longer a nurse, she was known in the San Francisco community to give out hashish brownies, and she would go into the hospitals mm -hmm. and meet AIDS patients and give them brownies, and the community loved her for this. Um, I kind of uh, stumbled upon her during her situation where they tried to arrest her. So <clears throat> there was a lot of news about her being arrested. They, they arrested this old lady for doing good. And she went to court, and about 3,000 of us showed up at her court trial. Um, it was just amazing. And so at this court trial, long story short, she did not get acquitted. The entire place cheered when um, all charges were dropped because she was doing good. She was helping right, these people right, out, giving right. these brownies. Um, <coughs> long story short, she was not buying marijuana because she was being given it to, people were giving it to her to make the brownies. Mm -hmm. She was handing out the brownies free of charge, so she wasn't selling it. Right, um, right. So she was, you know, charges were dropped. She was held uh, a queen. And now, if you go into those uh, cannabis stores in San Francisco, you'll see her picture there on the walls. Wow. So those stores in San Francisco today, she helped start that whole movement. So Beautiful. it's people like that, that you just, uh, heroes and role models that inspired me and other people to do what we do. Mm -hmm. And so she's this one small what example. What was her reason for uh, giving out the brownies with the marijuana? Is it because that they're... I mean, the marijuana itself was was it doing anything for for the symptoms of the of the HIV or AIDS or was it just something that what was her in, intent? Of, of yeah, that? I mean, it was really just um, in the beginning we didn't have HIV medications per se. Right, they were right. using cancer-like medications, AZT, yeah. mm -hmm. which was a real killer. It was a it's mm -hmm. a chemo type medication. <laughs> now, if you're going to give someone chemo, say for cancer, you give it to them for a couple of weeks and you stop because the chemo can be really damaging. Yeah. These guys and some girls in the early 80s that were getting uh, HIV AIDS were given chemo not just for a few weeks, but on and on and on. So at first it started to help, but then they would take this medication and they were getting sick from the medication. They would go from 200 pounds to 130 pounds. Wow. So mm -hmm. the medications was what's, what's killing them. Um, some of the guys I know who were on AZT at the time says, you know, I'm taking this pill and it's making me sick. So yeah. they would only take half of that pill. And they're alive today to say that. Right. So we knew that the medication was a very toxic type cancer medication. It helped, but it also really hindered, too, and the side right. effects were drastic. One of the side effects was just wasting away. Right. So the marijuana part of it was really just helping them keep food down, the side effects of these uh, toxic drugs, so that they can have some kind of appetite, so they can put on some so kind of weight 80s, and early, get some kind of food in their late system. 80s, early 90s. Late 80s, early 90s, So they've yes. already had an idea. This woman, mm -hmm. this person has already had an idea that the marijuana can help with the symptoms even back in the late 80s and 90s. Oh, right. oh sure. And right then, from the very beginning. Right from the yes. beginning. 
Because I, I, you know, for our audience, uh, just want to brief on how you know HIV uh, is a disease that attacks the body's immune system. Uh, it's a natural defense system by killing protective white blood cells. Uh, over time, HIV reduces the number of white blood cells in the body, which makes it harder for the body to fight off infections. When we met with you, I remember you were telling us about the T cells. Sure. Now you got to be below like 200 or below at some point. Uh, that that it when you get to a certain level in your T cells. Um, it, it's per cubic millimeter of blood or less. Stage of HIV infection is when the T cells reach too high. Sure, yeah. So let me just des so describe it a little bit. So if you have the HIV virus, the virus gets into your system. Yeah. What the virus yeah. does is it attacks your T cell. It feeds off of that and lives off of that. It grows, destroys the T cell. Once it destroys this T cell, it goes on to the next, next one, one, goes on to the next one. Your T cells are your fighter cells that keep you... Your, everybody has an immune system. So if you have a cold, if you have a strong immune system, you can fight off that cold. If you have a very weak T cell or right. no T cells at all, you, you, you can't fight off the cold, and then you would go from cold to flu to pneumonia to death. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why the strong immune system is really, really important. So, yeah, the virus would come in and attack the T cell. So when someone's HIV positive, they look at it two ways on the lab report. One is with the T-cells, how strong are your T-cells, how hard and strong is your body fighting this virus. Mm -hmm. And the other part of it is the viral load, how much of the virus is in your system. Right. So if you have just a little bit of virus in your system, uh, it, it, what they say it's called undetectable. It's an mm -hmm. oxymoron, but it's really undetectable if you're under 20 particles. Okay. If you become more than 20 particles and it's higher in your system, well then... Uh, once you come to a certain point where your T cells are low, below 200 T cell, and your viral load is high, well now the HIV virus has made you sick, it's attacked your body, and that's where you cross that line from having the virus known as HIV to being AIDS. AIDS. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when you have that low um, T cell count, are you able to fight that off to, I mean, is there... Well, Something that's nice. part of the treatment, too. So in HIV treatment, you don't just give them HIV medication, but you worry about the whole body. You try to give right. them nutritious food. Side, yeah. um, and yeah. sure, drinks have been one way to kind of get the body's immune system back up. Vitamin C, um, healthy foods, uh, better eating, but right. also you know eating some other stuff just to gain calories if you're losing weight. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it's, it's a double-edged sword. You, you're trying to help the person with these medications, but the medications make you sick, so then you're also doing these other treatments to is. take care of mm -hmm. the side effects and keep you going. In, the, in this, the member, we were going over this study last week about all the different um, symptoms or the side effects that they were focusing on when you had, they had a study, this is back in you know 2005, among other studies, but sure. I found this to be very interesting, um, where they took a, a little over 500 uh, HIV positive patients and 97% of them reported that they had an improvement in their side effects or most of the appetite and they all took just 25 milligrams of cannabis that's nothing mm -hmm. that's right. equivalent to like one of our gummy uh, right. one of our gummies right just yeah you know yeah. so um i can't imagine what you know if somebody were to go on uh like, a, like 300 or 600 one of yeah. other milligrams what it would do but i found it very interesting that um and that's why i asked you is like what was the purpose of you know having the marijuana back in the day was it really to focus on the side effects yeah, mostly for the side effects. But, well, I mean, let's face it. Back in the old days, people smoked pot. They yeah, did it. <laughs> and they did a lot of other drugs yeah. too yeah. in the really 70s. You know? But it was more and that recreational. Was going on. Nobody really knew what it was yeah. doing for you medically. No, but but it, it was not uncommon. It was there. Right. So now, this is something you normally do in your life, and it's there, and you know how it affects your body. Okay, now, let's say it's 1983, 85, mm -hmm. whatever it might be. You now have the virus, and now your body starts to change. And so, you know, all of a sudden, well, wait a second, I don't, my appetite has changed. And then you go, oh, wait a second, you know, we used to uh, smoke a joint and then we'd get the munchies. Well, so it just was just kind of a, a, 
a necessary thing. Yeah, Not even right. an experiment thing. It was just kind of natural. You it knew that it did that. So I said, okay. hey, well, you know, three years ago, before I had the virus, I got I the munchies, but now I need to have the munchies. I tried. <laughs> I, I, tried I tried smoking it twice, and it... They give me the munchies. It just lay me right out. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, you know, and even that part of it, if it does kind of, uh, you know, sedate you, sedate you a little yeah. bit and chill you out. It's Let me tell you, the stress is a real big part of it because as in the 80s, it was a life or death sentence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As a gay man in New York City, and if I went to bed, it was a life or death situation. So every moment of your life was stressful. Right. Um, right. And so the stress, it calms people down, too. So that, <laughs> another helpful yeah. side effect that they can help with but, oh, yeah. but, but my late husband remember with i've been involved with it since 81 also yeah. and i used to find that i'd put it in the tomato sauce and make the lasagna or the meatballs <laughs> so i knew how it helped personally and i never got in trouble because i was not selling or buying no. it was given to me to put into my meatballs sure. and into my Forget sauce parsley. and it, i was known as a lasagna <laughs> lady yeah right but for all those times in houston and even beyond I never yeah. had a problem because I knew what it would help, and and so I can understand all of this. It will help with the appetite. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Nowadays, the medications for HIV are much <laughs> oh, different. Yes. You don't have such severe side effects, but with the way things are, because things are better, you do have people living 30, 35 years with mm-hmm. HIV, and right. so their their bodies are much different. We have senior citizens now that are 75, 80 years old that yeah. are HIV. Yeah. So they've been on these medications a long time. Part of their uh, lack of nutrition is the HIV meds, and part of it is just being a senior citizen and their health mm-hmm. not being as yeah. strong mm-hmm. as it used to be. Right. We talked about that last week, oh, yeah. how I said that STD rates are yes. up significantly in the, in the senior right. population. and. We mentioned that, and that was one of the reasons is seniors think that they don't need to have protection, yeah. and they can just go and come and do whatever they want. They don't realize that they're still an incubator for this virus. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like you said, it's come a long way. The 80s were a sector where the public became aware of it, and then we're, we had no HIV medicines, so we were just using, say, chemo, cancer-type medications, and trying anything and everything to try to help the situation. Yeah. By the 90s, medications had changed, and by 96, they had some better medications. But the real turning point was 96 with what they known as the cocktail the therapy. Cocktails. Right. Dr. David Ho um, mm-hmm. invented the cocktail therapy, which was not so much a new improved medication but it was just a mathematical equation mm-hmm. taking these different medicines in smaller doses combining it into one pill and mm-hmm. that made the death toll drop yeah 30 to 40 percent within that first year wow well uh, we just want to remind the audience we're here with ed sparon uh aids activist uh, uh we're discussing hiv aids and uh just the benefits of of cannabis I mean, we're talking many years ago that they've already been trying and just come to figure out that, you know, taking CBD products has helped in so many ways and the side effects, not just appetite, but uh, chronic pain relief. True. There's another study on that. It was uh, amazing and how they were able to relieve, uh, in some cases, it was, they felt like there was no pain, but, but, but it all depends. Everybody's different with their regimens and their, and their pain, man- you know, symptoms and... Yeah, today, if you're HIV positive, it's a little bit different. Like I said, the medications are much better there are still some small side effects. You really don't have that wasting like you used to. Blood inflammation is still uh, a situation, right. arthritis in older people, but the inflammation is definitely a part of it. Um, and so the cannabis part of it does help with the inflammation. Right. right. And have people yeah. call in if you have any questions for Ed, who really is an authority on this, literally. <laughs> yes, he um, is. There is. Call in and ask your questions while we've got them. I know. It's 888-565-1470. Uh, 10 Boca Time, live uh, broadcast out of uh, Boca Raton, Florida. Jean and Chris and Susan. Susan Lee Mintz. Lee Mintz. <laughs> Show a little respect but, uh, to the old broad. Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> Always do. So, <laughs> more than 12, I mean, I know statistics, they change every day, right? But more than 12 million have HIV and approximately one out of eight. They don't even know they have it. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, I mean, it's well. We're we're in South Florida, and so when I'm out there in the field talking to people, when you tell them those numbers, it's like a slap in the face. Yeah. So the first thing I always tell them is, well, like I said, because 
HIV is not what it used to be. It's livable, it's manageable, better medications. So people don't talk about it. They don't think it exists anymore. Right. You know, uh, hi high school kids don't think about it. So, for example, when we teach in the high schools, they think about pregnancy. Mm -hmm. A young guy, male, is afraid of getting a girl pregnant. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an, uh, a financial struggle. It's going to be a problem. It's not going to kill them, but they really have a fear towards getting a girl pregnant. They're not fearful of getting an STI or an HIV, which can kill them. And part of that reason is the way things are. You, they see pregnancy in the home, in film, in television, in the movies, in their life, in their families. So they're aware of pregnancy as being an issue. They don't see HIV in the home, in their family, because even in the home and the family, if there was an mm -hmm. uncle or someone who passed away, it's not talked about because of the right. stigma. Exactly. It's not, uh, and they don't realize it. And it's also, you don't see HIV on TV and oh, film and television no. anymore. You don't. You know, no. that's when it first it. came out, you had movies but like Philadelphia. Was. Fil that was like the Philadelphia only, Day. I mean, yeah. That was like the only it one. Was, it was Forrest Gump, Gump, was that Forrest Gump 20, touched 20, on it. Philadelphia yeah. touched yeah. on it. But there has been Dallas Buyers Club. Every decade, a yeah. movie will come out. But the media doesn't care about it. It's not yeah. newsworthy. It's manageable. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. And again, that's an... Inf it, it bothers me terribly because in the 90s especially, it was a oh, yeah. mom and pop deal. They were supporting their kids. They've had, the sons were dying. So you had a lot of local organizations and right. you had money yeah. for it. But it was a lot of mom and pop people talking about it and doing the support groups. As the funds dried up, mm -hmm. as the mom and pops died off and everything changed, yeah. Yeah. you're yeah. not. There should be a show on TV about this every other day. Yeah. Well, here's an example is, so with gay and lesbian uh role models on television. There are many of them on TV and much more accepted. Yeah. But, for example, Will and Grace, great show, been on for over 10 years. It has many different role models mm -hmm. of gay and lesbian characters. In the past 10 years, that show's been on, not one character has been HIV positive. Right, right. And we had talked about that <laughs> And people are week. shocked. And yeah. I, 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 I get upset about this, and it, it fires me because Sure, there's Jack, the queen, and the theater queen, and I love that part of it. Then there's Will, and, you know, there's many different types of role models that show different types of role models. Rapport. But there's no role model on television that shows HIV yeah, positive. Yeah. No, you know, no. I, I, and, and it, it fires me up because mm -hmm. um, I'm 55 years old, and I'm HIV positive 16 years. Mm -hmm. My diagnosis was uh, wow. January 30th, 2002. I was at my doctor today. And I'm as healthy as a horse. I, I've never been in better health in my life. But there's not one HIV-positive character that mm -mm. reflects who I am and reflects to these young kids who are 22, 24 years right. old, 17 years old, and having sexual activity and knowing what it's like to live with HIV. These right. young kids have, don't know. They've no. never suffered the death that we have. So there's a huge demarcation between the young generation and the old generation. The older generation who we've lived through death. I've seen hundreds of people pass right. away. But a 22-year-old kid has never, never known experienced. someone right. experienced that. So they don't know what it's like. So they don't fear it. They don't right. have that fear. Right. A Golden Girls, I mean, the show, The Golden Girls, that would be a, po a positive type of show because she was so promiscuous. It's so... That's what we need. We need a show that's got yeah. an HIV positive woman or a man who's not a well, kid, they, also who's they also that. been around. Betty White. They did an episode with Betty White um, getting uh, um, you know, possibly been infected. She went and got the test. Oh my God, I'm scared. Mm -hmm. And then when she got a result, it was just kind of fluffed off. It was done so lightly that I was like, Ooh, I'm a little bad <laughs> about it. You know. <laughs> But then again, they were network television. They have to watch their P's and Q's. But at least, it, and, and they only uh, did that episode because B. Arthur was an advocate, and she really pushed for that episode. Yeah. When you when you were at this at the center, um, were there any exposure or any you know those that have HIV were using any type of CBD products or uh, you know to help with any side effects? Was it any type of education or awareness? Um, right there, or? I, I don't think. I mean. Not at the center, but anywhere I work or anywhere I'm involved with, there's no real education towards that. Um, there are places out there doing services, HIV, what they call case management. So we'll hook you up to a doctor, right. we'll get you right. services, and then there's some auxiliary services. This barber will come in and give you free haircuts, there's the food bank. 
little things like that. But there's really not much other help assistance as far as the side effects, such as um, acupuncture. Um, the holistic parts of it. The whole, right. holistic parts of it. I think people <laughs> search that out. So people who are HIV positive go into support groups, and so they're looking for ways, and then they find their path. So I think a lot of people find meditation, holistic methods, cannabis methods through support groups and through because another is just getting a prescription from a doctor and just go get your go get drugs instead of really trying to. I mean, there are alternatives, obviously. Yeah. It's a natural, healthier way. Yeah. And I think that's part of it, too. Your doctor may, oh, I don't want to touch that or talk about right. it. And then you leave Depending that doctor and you find a doctor that <clears throat> will work with you and understand it. So that you, you find a doctor that understands it that will help you out with that well, well, and, and prescribe it. Yeah. Right. Well, maybe, maybe there's an opportunity for, for us, you know, with Ed and, and to go out there and see if you can, you know, connect us with and bring awareness. You know, meet with these uh, groups. You know, sit in these groups and, and discuss. Yeah, is there a group that we can that, speak you know, to? We could. We could uh, uh, I, that I, would think, I think if you spoke to some of the <laughs> HIV support groups that are yeah. out there, you'll find that they're pretty knowledgeable about this, but you could enlighten them a little bit more and at least help them point the way a little right, bit. Right, right. Um, I think, though, I think another one way is to like maybe go into the holistic groups these holistic wellness centers mm -hmm. um, who may be doing things such as this mm -hmm. um, but not you know they're they're giving acupuncture right. they're doing meditation and if they know about your product they can assist that in their conversation with your clients gotcha that's great. right that's no that's great but uh, this thing is sitting right in front of me <laughs> It's a bomb. It's staring it's a bomb. at me. <laughs> Did you take your oil already, Susan? No, I was waiting to be introduced to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I had to have the right time, Aww. the right situation, and shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake, shake it up. Okay. Yeah, so we learned a couple of other things from you that uh, yes. were helping. So what did you do? Oh, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Uh huh. Yeah. I know. You can't talk. <laughs> you can't hold it. Uh, can't go for two seconds. <laughs> Tough thing to not See, do. At this point, this is when you start asking a question. Yeah. After right you hit me with one. <laughs> <laughs> go for it. It's done. It is sublingually done. How are your thumbs? Working. The trigger thumb. Working. Thumbs you see it? They are working. And it's the hair. It's all in the hair. I'm telling you, though. It's pain, everything's yeah. good. Yeah. Much better. Sleeping well. So you, uh, you also brought up to us about yes, yeah, about the interstitial cystitis. Interstitial cystitis. Cystitis. Say that. No, so that's a tongue twister. There. It is. I see. Wow. I, I see. see, and it is. It's a very it's a uncomfortable, unpleasant. Very common in women. Uh, right? Very common in women, and it's a very. It's a trigger issue that they don't really know why it happens, but when it does, you know you've got it. And you'll have flares. I mean, I'm always having flares. And there's regular medications, and there's the CBD oils, too. But I've been so dealing with this for 15 years now, on and off, on and off, on and off. What's the, uh, so what is, uh, what is that product helping you with? Well, I don't know. I don't have a problem right now. Oh, good. <laughs> so I don't know if it's helping or not. But I know when I'm having a flare. <laughs> Usually it's foods that trigger this off. Most really? time, but they really, there's so much information. If you were to go and check out uh, interstitial cystitis on the Internet, when there's so much information and it all boils down to the same issue, then you know you're, that's it. They don't know how. Yeah. They don't know why. They don't know what foods trigger it because you can have the Mayo Clinic or WebMD or uh, other places that will tell you trigger foods. But then there's other places that will tell you that that food's okay. So you can go nuts with IC, not only because it's physically debilitating. I mean, you're in chronic bladder, bladder vaginal pain, but it's just very hard to diagnose, but it's also very hard to treat. Mm -hmm. And you don't know when it's going to flare. That one martini I had that one time with you, yeah. Yeah. I had a flare for well, a couple of days. Wow. wow. Oof. At the Hyatt? Uh-huh. Well, you started oh, that day. That day. Next day. Yeah. Oh, no, it yeah. started the next morning. Oh, wow. Well, it's pronounced interstitial. Interstitial. <laughs> I love it. Just look up. Cystitis. Yeah, it's not. It's also it? called painful. <laughs> Just look up. Painful bladder syndrome. That's right. Painful bladder syndrome. Okay. Painful bladder <laughs> syndrome. <laughs> Back to prep. <laughs> no, I, I tell you. Yes. I tell you. Um, as we're progressing with hemp boca, you know, our products and stuff, and how we're getting feedback from uh, uh, customers, it's a we're. You know, the norm is to focus on, okay, here's a whole, like, you know, list of the most popular symptoms that we all, you know, anxiety, 
chronic pain, lower back, life, uh, sleep. Oh yeah. <laughs> Life. But then, then when <laughs> someone comes in, oh, you know, it's helped me with, with this and with that, uh, fibromyalgia, RLS, restless leg syndrome. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's really, it's great to hear because all the CBD product is doing in your, we all have, we'll have a cannabinoid system. It's called the endocannabinoid. So that's why I recognize it. So, you know, the product is, uh, and when, when you're off during the day, I mean, you, you're off, you're, you're the, your endocannabinoid system is telling you that you're missing something. You have, you know, you have these receptors, the CB1, CB2 receptors. That, and when you take the, uh, the product, it just blankets your body, right? It just, it, but it hits on everything. You know, you have chronic well, pain. Well, you have receptors bad. all over your body. Yeah. So it does, so, the receptors, so you have inflammation. It's yeah, going it to be migraines, focus on those points. Uh, well, you know. Susan, you may know this. You're saying it helps with the restless leg syndrome. A lot of HIV patients get neuropathy. Mm-hmm. So is, I would think that's a similar thing. Do you know much about this cannabis oil helping with neuropathy? Well, no. I haven't, research, with, I haven't yeah. researched this, but I would think with the restless leg syndrome, which it's, I get once similar, in a while, yeah. it's a twitching. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a muscular type of a thing. And I don't know, one doctor says it's nerves, another one says it's muscles, but I would think it would help mm-hmm. with restless legs. Because I know It'd a lot of people that go to and see doctors and try to get help, and some people get help and some people don't. So I know a lot of guys who get the neuropathy and are always trying different ways that this didn't work, and it worked for this person but not for me. Yeah. So they're always looking for some other way to help with that neuropathy, and then we can maybe mm-hmm. look and find out if this would help with that. If it yeah. helps with yeah. restless leg syndrome. Right, right. It's very, un- it's, a, it's horrible when you have it because you can't, you won't sleep because you jump. Your legs are just always jumping and yeah. shifting and twitching and you can't mm-hmm. control it. Wow. Wow. Well, you when know. You're, at my age, I've got almost everything. <laughs> 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 it's true. There's, I could probably check off a list of what I've either had or have or plan on getting when I'm old and gray. Well, you know what, Ed? It's very impressive. You sent us your bio. Um, mm-hmm. May I read your bio off I, to I guess the so. I, viewers and I can't stop you. listeners? You know what you're asking, just read it. I don't want him to like flash no. right or anything. Like, 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 make sure it's correct. People, unbelievable. Did I say it wrong? If he said if he said no, like I'm going to read it anyway. I'm just going to go read it. No limits. No boundaries, Ed. Yeah, it's a book of time. <laughs> like P.T. Barnum, Ed was born in Bridge, um, Bridgeport, Connecticut. He moved to New York City in the 80s to pursue his theater career. He began his career as an actor, writer, director, and playwright. In the 90s, he moved to San Francisco, where the LBG, LGBT community and theater community combined. In San Francisco, he was the artistic director of the PWA, Persons with AIDS Theater. There, in San Francisco, he became very active as a community title holder and activist. His play, Bert's Big Bed, was successful and was educational and entertaining in how people accept HIV. He moved to South Florida 1994 and has been an activist here for the past 25 years. He has written five plays and continues to direct his currently play, Forever Hard, <laughs> I'm sorry. No? <laughs> That's appropriate here. <laughs> Forever hard. <laughs> it's a double on time. Has huh? won yeah, the playwright <laughs> <laughs> sanctuary LGBTQ <laughs> achievement award for theater arts in HIV education. Uh. <laughs> You're blushing again. Folks, no limits, no boundaries. Yeah. Going to deal with it. <laughs> it's not what you think. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's probably not. In the HIV community for six years, he was one of the founders and was the manager for the World AIDS Museum and Educational Center. We visited that there oh, good, in right. Will Manor, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Very impressive. He now works for the Lynn Warwick Institute <coughs> as the education director teaching safer sex in the schools. He also works for the Pride Center at Equality Park running the PrEP program. Very impressive. Incredible. It's great. Wow. Time. And this is from the nine, but the eighties up to today. That's yeah, like thirty, still. almost forty years. Yeah, I mean, I, I, wow. My parents lived in Florida when I came here twenty-five years ago, and then I woke up, go, my God, I've been in Florida twenty-five years. Where did the time <laughs> go? <laughs> no. I just zoomed right by. 
you know, because my, my, my dad always said, oh, come to Florida. You can get theater work here in Florida. I said, Dad, running around amusement park in a bear suit is not theater. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't understand that. Um, but I, I finally came here, and, and, and we made it what it was. Um, but I think one of the reasons why I became so active, especially in South Florida, is back to the facts that we were talking about, yeah. that HIV and AIDS of all newly infected people, people going out there today and getting infected with HIV and having unsafe sex, of all newly infected people in the entire United States, Miami-Dade is number one. Oh, Broward County's number that two. Is, that's amazing. Palm Beach County's number six in the United States for over the past 10 years. This is the epicenter, South Florida, of HIV, and it isn't talked about at all. Right, right. Have you heard anything? No. Nothing. When you first told us that <laughs> we were in the top two spots, like Florida? Uh, I was three. Well, three. Three. Yeah. One, yeah, one, one, two, two, and six. six. One, one, two, two, and six. six. Right. I, I, it amazes me. And yeah. then there's so many stigma and that people, there's people that's <sighs> infected with HIV and is not aware of it. Yeah, and they're and infecting other people. And it's not even the LBGTQ community. No, it's it not. really isn't. It's just random uh, it's, people there. It is anyone, it could be everyone. It's someone the young know, people. It could be someone I know. I mean, we could know someone with HIV, and they don't even know it. Christina. Chances are, yeah. <laughs> no, Christina chances Latina. are you do, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a good example is, so a number of people always ask me right at that point is like, so why is it so prevalent here? <clears throat> well, it's not just because of the LBGT community. Okay. That's a small piece of it. Right. It's many different aspects. One, the population. It's a very dense population here. A lot of transient behavior. Uh, people coming in and out. Snowbirds, right. tourists, the spring breakers, you know, all of that. The cruise ships. Um, you have Haitian and Jamaican communities highly affected because they were part of the initial virus in the early days mm -hmm. so right. um yes. the drug community you don't just get hiv surprise surprise through sex no a yeah. lot of Needle. hiv is through yeah. dirty needles dirty and, needles yeah. and if not even through dirty needles you're <clears throat> high you're drunk you know mm -hmm. you go out there and say it's saturday night oh you don't plan on having unsafe sex but you make the wrong choices because you're right. a little high you're a little buzzed right. you're a little drunk so all of those drugs coming out of south florida through miami that enters the United States, there's a huge, huge drug problem, especially in South Florida. Right. So when we speak in the schools, that's where I really like want to grab these kids and shake them. Um, because they don't it's, realize, yeah. Well, it's that. I mean, they, kids party, they have, you know, they, they have a drink or two, but they don't understand the repercussions of their actions. In high schools, they're, they're talked about texting and driving and drinking and driving, but you can still make that car accident in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. You know, right. drinking and driving and getting right. high, you can go in the bedroom and make those wrong choices Correct. and get an STI or HIV. The, the other so thing is, they used to when it was World AIDS Day or when it was National HIV Testing Day, the TV stations nationally would mention it. Yeah. They would promote it. They would talk about it. Not even now. What was it, the most recent one was it was a World AIDS Day, December 1st. Oh. I checked all three stations and I couldn't find anybody who even mentioned it. And, and that's a sad commentary about how you are allowing people to go out there without the right information, infecting themselves, and getting others infected, and you're not in the media responsible for covering some of this. That's a crime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and yeah, even in the, in the actual individual <laughs> itself, we used to have thousands and thousands, and now yeah. we just don't have those numbers. Mm -mm. Is it because they're all passed away? A little bit. But no, people just don't talk about it. They just don't care. They're sitting home watching Netflix, and they're having a good time, wow. and they don't care. So I see the numbers in AIDS vigils dropping year oh, by yeah. year by year. This was just, these results are just a couple of years ago. I'm sure it hasn't really changed much. But in 2016, just in Miami-Dade, it was 26,000, approximately 26,000 people living with HIV, 73.6% male, 26% female. And wow. then you have then they then they split out to black, Hispanic, Latina, and white. Mm -hmm. It's worse. Black is forty two point five percent, forty five Hispanic and white. That's the chart that 10%. I showed the viewers mm -hmm. last week. <clears throat> People don't want to hear some start, of these no, things. They think they're being this, politically incorrect. Because a, they a black male has several stigmas. So 
um, as a gay male, yeah, please talk white, me, uh, shed light I, on that. As a gay male, white, there is sexual activity, so the prevalence of getting it is um, that. Um, but also, too, amongst uh, whites, there's low income, middle income, high income. So now, then you add in a minority, so a mm -hmm. young black man who may not have better education, so they don't get the facts and they don't get the knowledge or support. Um, poverty situation. They're not getting the right food, nutrition, knowledge, right. education. Um, uh, and then also, too, in a uh, community such as that where there might be poverty or crime, the chances of getting HIV or an STI are higher just because of those other factors. Right. So a good example is in the gay community, say, Wilton Manors, we know HIV, and you can go to a free HIV test Within a one-mile radius, there's probably seven or eight free testing things mm -hmm. any afternoon, seven right, days a week. Right. One mile away on Sistrunk Boulevard, there's no testing. <laughs> and that's where there's a high rate of HIV. It's the epicenter of the epicenter. But yeah. on, for some people, they know to say, okay, well, the gays know about this. Mm -hmm. So some people in the black community do come down to the gay community. They'll go to, out of the closet. They'll go to the thrift store. They'll go get that free HIV test. And then they go back because if they go to that doctor in their neighborhood, they don't are afraid of the stigma right. and, and being seen in that particular doctor's office. Right. But it's quick and easy to just go in the thrift store and they say, where were you today? Mm -hmm. oh, I was at the thrift store. But not the real reason he was there to go get an HIV right, test. Right. Now, the bad news is if he does go get that test and he becomes <laughs> HIV positive, well, at least he knows he's HIV positive. But... Unfortunately, now, once he goes back to his home and his community and his support system, he may not get that support. Mm -hmm. So he's not getting the help. He's not getting the education. He may not stay, stay on right. his medication to keep him uh, happy and healthy. Because yeah. he healthy. fears of yeah. people, other people finding knowing, out. finding out. And, right. that, and they I still mean, think that's, it's a death sentence, unfortunately. Yeah, and it's, it's not. Yeah, so either way. And how yeah. people handle their diagnosis. That's one of the things, True. to take somebody with you, have a friend go with you to get your test. Because when you find out, you're going to be shocked. It's not easy. And yeah. it's not. It's one of the most horrible things. and you'll, It's a mm -hmm. date you'll never forget if you're diagnosed. That way. So a support system is really important. And most of the time, if the younger, with, uh, younger or older, they don't have a support system to talk about this. And that's just, you know, that's sad. Because you don't want to have a diagnosis by yourself and then go home and think about that. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that the opium, they always talk about the opioid crisis, the oh, opioid epidemic. Yeah. Well, you know what? When you're high, the last thing you're thinking yeah. about is putting a condom on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Not forever hard. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Well, then there's condoms, too. And I yeah. sent you that information about that. Did I give you that slide information <laughs> yes, about that lady? that's amazing. Yeah. So before this... Safer sex practices have always been known as the condom, right? right? Use a condom. Well, gay or straight, guys don't like using condoms. End the story. Right. But uh, there was a study um, by this doctor, and I can't think of her name right now, but it was with the CDC, and she showed a study where people, a group of people that she surveyed, they use condoms every single time of every single, single sexual activity. Even if they use that condom at every single sexual activity, they were only 70% protected. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you would think if I use a condom every single mm -hmm. time I have sex, I'm 100% protected because I always use condoms. Mm -hmm. Right. No. No. There's so many different mm -hmm. factors. First of all, a condom is a man-made product. It can break. It can slip. Right. It can break during the act. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, they think that, oh, let me get the more expensive uh, um, lambskin condoms. They're thinner. Well, they're thinner because they have perforated holes mm -hmm. in them. So, yes, they're, they don't feel as uncomfortable as the latex ones, but because of those perforated holes, HIV virus will go through them like water through a right. sieve. Mm -hmm. right? And people don't know that either. Wow. So condoms are not a cure-all. It's, it's, we call it the safety belt. Mm -hmm. So in your car, you should have several different safety features. You have seat belts, airbags. You're mm -hmm. not going to buy a car without several different safety right, features. Right. Same thing in sexual activity, we call it the sexual toolbox. You have to have several different safety features. Condoms, um, conversation, talk about someone's right. HIV status, um, and then now the new conversation, which is PrEP. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wow. Great Would we be um, the, I guess, maybe put on a website or something, like locations of where someone can go? 
and oh, honestly, absolutely, yeah. that would be such a huge, you know, I think that would right. be important for people a, to... Yeah, any, any, any uh, website or phone, website, the, yeah, phone numbers? Are, are well, the one place I know here in, in uh, West Palm Beach, I know, is the Compass Gay and Lesbian Community Center. They do phenomenal HIV testing. Mm -hmm. And once again, it's not just about the testing, it's about the case management. Mm -hmm. sure. Because if you are, you go there, get a test, and that's fine. So if you get a test and you're negative, okay, cool. Here's some condoms. Here's some safer sex information. Be careful. But if you become HIV positive, then they will also link you to care, hook you up with doctors, yeah. tell you where to go. They're excellent. And, yeah. and help you out with things. So in West Palm Beach, I know Compass is a great place. In Lake Worth. Um, but in Br Broward yeah. County, where I am, there's tons of places. Once, of, of course, is the Department of Health on State Road 84 and in Pompano Beach. Um, there is at Out of the Closet Thrift Store, free mm -hmm. HIV testing. And I have two locations there, and you just go and shop and buy some great goodies and get a quickie test and go back. Um, you do, the the Pride great. Center, um, uh, the, Pride Center yeah. the Latina Salude, um, and also, too, if you go to some of these places, don't just ask for an HIV test. Some of these locations will do STI and HIV as well. Right. Okay. Well, we're here with Ed Sparron, uh, AIDS activist. Uh, it's a lot of great information great here information. for those. Um, yeah, don't worry. We'll have all those information locations, phone numbers. Mm -hmm. um, be well, posted we, on our yeah. website. And by the way, when you go to hempboga.com to learn not only about our products or information, there is a link that, that goes to all of our previous recording shows. So uh, we'll have this uploaded within you know a couple days, usually average about 24, 48 hours. So you can always reference back to, to our shows. Sure. But this is great information uh, you know, to pass on if you if you have HIV or AIDS or if you know somebody who does, uh, you know, this could just could help that person. Save yeah. someone's life. But, um, Some, but if you want to follow, if you want to follow Hemp Boca, we are on just under uh, thirty different platforms. Uh, you can check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, like uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, iHeart, TuneIn, uh, SoFlow Mixers, Tumblr, Radio Public, Spotify, Breaker, Stitcher. There's a whole list. Jesus. All on our website, <laughs> <laughs> hempboca.com. You know, so as that grows, you know what that means. <laughs> the audience is growing. Yes. <laughs> so it's good for us. If you want to send an email. Uh, any, any thoughts that you have, you can send it to awareness at hempoka.com. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions, yeah. if you want to email yep. us or call us, leave a voicemail. The website, you know. your website's beautiful, and you do have Thank all you. the testimonies, Thank and you, you do have the uh, information you. about previous shows, because I watched it today. Thank it's, you. it's beautifully yeah, done. Yeah, and I put a, I put a uh, discount code on there to kind of just coincide with what the, what's going on in January, which is really winter, right? It's a winter month. So if you uh, type in the code WINTER, you get a discount on all our products in the stores. It's started today. It will go through the end of January. So we hope you try our products out. If you have any questions, uh, you know, you can reach out to uh, Gene and myself uh, through awareness at hempoga.com. Or leave voicemail at 561-295-4800. Correct. And so if it's a nice, nice message, we'll... Yeah, we'll... We'll, we'll play it, right? <laughs> Yeah. You're the boss. If, you so you're, you're if we choose your message, you know, <laughs> you're depending on what you leave on there. Yeah. But, but uh, it's great we're coming stuff. towards the end of the show, <laughs> and oh. we're here with Ed Sparon and Susan Lee Mintz. Amen. 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 How's the, uh, how's the oil doing? Oh, it's lovely. I have that aftertaste in my mouth that's lingering. You know, we're as you know, we're out and about all the time, you know, meeting with uh, potential clients and, you know, talking to customers and stuff, and... and uh, our product is very earthy tasting mm -hmm. and when a lot of the products out there have flavor you know it's it's a way to just so like market and stuff because if, if something you know if you like strawberry and you find a cbd product that tastes like strawberry you're going to want to go back and buy because of the flavor taste but yeah. we, we don't we just have we have um it's very earthy and raw and raw real you like it yes <laughs> sweet Lingering. But, yeah, so so when we have a you know, we have potential clients that they'll they'll taste it and they'll like, Oh, you know, some don't care for it, right? But we tell them it's like, listen, this is this is an immediate immediate signal that how pure and or organic and natural our, our product is. Because you know we have stevia, which is yeah. uh, great for di diabetes, you know, blood pressure, um, blood sugar levels, and then M C T fractionated coconut oil. There's a whole list of benefits there. When, yeah. Well, can we have Ed back another time to talk Absolutely. about Absolutely. This is of course. a part yeah, there's, two. Yeah. There's yeah, so much more to discuss. True. <laughs> so much more. And one hour just gone by just like that. We should because I have, I have here a brochure that he gave us a while back on prep. And uh, we can make that just a whole 
you know, yeah. one hour episode because there's a lot of information Cause there about because you're doing it, you're exposing the public to what really bring awareness, is, and they're yes. bringing awareness. Thirty seconds, so, real quick, on what it is. Of sure. course, let's let's, let's do it, and, and we'll schedule. So when you go and get an HIV mm -hmm. test, you get your test. They take the the finger prick. Okay, you your negative test. You do not have HIV. So usually in the old days, we'd say, okay, you don't have HIV. Here's a condom. Have a nice day. Nowadays, we don't do that. We talk about your other safer sex practices. What are you doing and how can we improve upon that? And besides the condom, there are many other different safer sex practices. One of them is PrEP. PrEP is a pill. The pill is known as Truvada, and PrEP is the method, pre-exposure prophylactics. And people are shocked when I tell them you can take a pill to prevent from getting pregnant. Nowadays, you can take this one blue pill, Truvada. You take it every day. It will prevent you from getting HIV. If you're sexually active and you don't like using condoms, you can take this pill once a day, every day. If the virus enters your system, you will not get HIV. So that dies out, the virus dies out? Yeah. 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 The, 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 we'll go into more detail later, but the right. medicine kind of protects those T-cells we were talking mm -hmm. about earlier and doesn't allow the virus to attach to the T-cell. If it can't attach, it can't feed off of it, and it dies off. What about the expense, though, of that drug? <laughs> Expenses where we come in, you come see people like me, we um, connect you to doctors, and we connect you to programs within the drug company. And so uh, if you're low income... It's covered by insurance or recognized in any insurance of, plans? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's an expensive drug like yeah. most medications. So what we do is if you have insurance, we process you, we, we get covered by insurance. What's not covered by insurance gets covered by the drug company's copay card covers like $7,200 on their copay card. Um, but if you're unemployed or very poor and don't have any insurance whatsoever, there are other programs such as advancing access that can be accessed to actually get the medications covered. So if so you're making good money. Whatever. What's a, what's a pill go for? Uh, uh, well, <laughs> a, a 30 day supply yeah. is $1,200 to $1,800 a month. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know what? Stop having sex, people. <laughs> yeah. That's your safest sex. That is the yeah. safest sex. <laughs> of all people sitting there, Gene would be the one to say that. Yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, if you're rich and living on Las Olas, you can afford it. And go yeah, have go fun have and do fun. your thing. Exactly. But most wow. people don't make a lot of money and can't. Right. Well, that's yeah. like a mortgage payment. Yeah, would, would that be a disclaimer, though, that that's not 100% true, though, that it's going to prevent it? Or does it? Um, well, nothing is 100%. No. Right. It is between 90 and 99% effective. That's pretty good. Now, if you put the condom on and it breaks, then your chances are less. But I'm going to give you the pill. You're going to take it. If you take it, it works. If you don't take it, then it doesn't work. And every day you have to take it, right? Specifically, yeah, you have to. It takes a couple of days to build up in your system. You have to have it build up in your system. You can't just take it and say, "Hey, let's go out and party tonight." It like no, it doesn't it? work that. Are way. you taking it? Are you taking it? No, because I've already got the virus. I'm HIV positive, oh, so, so I don't so need it. So, um, too late for me. <laughs> but for all you people out there being sexually active. And who isn't being sexually active except for two nuns in Sunrise? Mm -hmm. So, you know. Mrs. <laughs> Bonner from both days, and that's for sure. Marijuana, <laughs> 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 no, martinis, and men. Yeah, oh, the in three my playbook. Central right Village, they're stupid. Oh, they're, they're retired, I can they're widowed. Smell it when I walk they're tired by. of playing bingo and oh. shuffleboard. They're, they're <gasps> screwed around. Saturday in the night, Saturday night in my clubhouse. These women are so dressed up and oh. partying so hard, and they bring their own bottles. And I know, because. I know. I mean, oh, I've lived yeah. there 14 years. I see it. It's yeah. high school for 60 and 70-year-olds and 80-year-olds. You it's see some of these restaurants that have bars, and you see elderly, single ladies sitting at bars dressed up, having and drinks. I, and they call that, I, don't I, they call I, that cougar? Cougar? Cougar night. I've actually got... No. I've actually cougar got is like when you're like... 40s, 50, yeah. and you're going for like 20-year-olds. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've actually gotten senior citizens. 74, I had an 84-year-old man come to me, and I put him on prep. He's 84. He's taking wow. another cool bill of Viagra, so the plumbing works. We as long about as the plumbing too. works, you know, <laughs> he's, good to go. he, he's, he's, he's susceptible. He's susceptible. So. Um, no thank limits. You again. No limits. No limits. No, no boundaries. boundaries. That's for sure. And uh, it's been a great show. Thank yeah. you, Ed. Ed Sparron. 
HIV activist. And Miss Susan, Susan Lee Mintz, as always, for being here. What you got yes. over there? People know you that this is minutes. Boner from Boca. What? Your books. Oh. Just come on now. We have two minutes. Two minutes. You may go to SusanMintz.com and see all the interviews on the home page and media pages. You can go and to the books, the books icon. You mean? And you can check out my books that are available on Barnes and Noble and Amazon. And held their hand and with then, hospice heart. Oh, the picture, yeah. And then <laughs> the old lady been around since and 19... Come in with love. Look at that picture. 1991. <laughs> Safe That's sex. That's a redhead right there. Oh, it's so sad to see it now. Oh, dear. <laughs> Oh, well, it's, it's Hemp Boca time every Tuesday night from 7 to 8 p.m. Broadcasting live at a Boca Raton. Gina, Chris, Ed, Susan. Sorry. And Ed, Farron. Do you Ed have a, a website that they can go to? I don't have a yourself, website, but no? maybe the, late this summer we'll uh, talk about my book. It's coming out this summer. Oh, <laughs> oh nice. Oh, congratulations. We'll have to talk then about that. We'll get you on the back on the show. When it comes out, yeah, we'll do a whole thing. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Thanks for joining yes. us. I'm have a wonderful evening. Oh, can we have cake on the... And I, I come back, hold cake. on a minute, my cousin, come back next, next week, my cousin Joe is going to be here, we're going to tell you how we met after so many years, you wouldn't believe this story. Good night. Sneak peek. Good night, everyone. Be Good safe. Night. Thank you for listening to the Hemp Boca Show. Tune in every week where we bring awareness and educate the community about hemp, CBD, cannabidiol, and health and wellness. For questions, comments, information, and products, visit hempboca.com. We'll see you next week. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its hosts, guests,